What's up everyone, this is Tyson at Titans of CNC. Today I'm going to show you the art of knurling. It's about to get crazy. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Before we get started, if you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, hit the like button and feel free to leave any comments. So I got here a straddle type knurler. I call it a double knurler in the shop. It's adjustable and you set it bigger or smaller depending on what diameter you're cutting and depending on how much pressure you want to put on the part. The way this knurler works is that it comes down, goes into the material and puts pressure on it which forces material up. The roller is on the knurl. These all spin along with the material and they've got an angle going on them in two different directions. You can see one's going this way, one's going this way. What that does is it forms a diamond on the material and it pushes it up. Depending on how much pressure you put on the material, you'll be getting a bigger or smaller diamond. With all the diamonds put together, that's what we call a knurl. So there's lots of different applications that you can use knurling for. Some people use it for hand grips. Some people just like how the knurls look visually. This particular part was used for an ROV, a remote operated vehicle. So you know on the ROV it has that big yellow foam? The knurl and this groove right here would actually grip that foam that they formed around it. Then you'd have holes like this sticking all around the foam and then they would screw the frame into these holes. That's pretty cool, right? Why don't we go into the machine and I'll show you how to make one. So step one, I'm going to put the tool shank without the actual knurl tool in. It's just the base shank. I'm going to put that into the machine. It's a three quarter inch shank. So I need to put a quarter inch shim into the tool slot. So I've got this L-shaped shim that I'm putting in. So the shim and the shank go into the machine and we're gonna tighten the bolts on the bottom. So step two, I'm going to adjust the knurl diameter. I set a pre-knurl diameter on the front of the part. So I need to make sure that this knurl tool is set smaller than that diameter. Basically however deep I want those knurls to be. I'm going to set this tool 30,000 smaller than my pre knurl diameter, which I set at 985. So I've got a 955 pin here. I'm going to slide this while tightening this bolt here, which will close the mouth of the knurl tool. And we're going to go until this barely touches this pin right here. Once I've got that in place, I'm going to tighten both of these bolts at the same time so it locks the tool nice and tight. And we're all set. Let me just make this crystal clear. I'm starting with one inch stainless steel and then we're going to turn it down to our pre knurl diameter of 985. Now our knurl tool has to be set smaller than that. So I'm going to set it 30,000 smaller to a diameter of 955, which allows the knurl tool to dig into the material by 30 thousandths. When the knurl tool digs into the material, it's pulling out the material the same amount. So we went in 30, and then it's pulling out 30 at the same time. So now my material, which was originally machined at 985, will actually grow to a knurl diameter of one inch 015. Step three, I'm gonna put the knurl tool into the shank here. I'm gonna put the back bolt on, but I'm not gonna tighten it down. I want the knurl tool still loose so that I can move it with my hand. Step four, we're going to index the turret now. We're going to handle jog the knurling tool. And we're going to get the knurl tool into position. And then when it's right above the bar, which is set to my pre knurl diameter, I'm going to bring it down and X slowly while jiggling the tool. And I'm going to try to get the tool centered to the bar. So we're going to handle jog it close. We're going to bring it down in X until I feel that both teeth are touching the bar of material here. Once I have both teeth spinning and I feel that I'm centered enough, I'm going to tighten down the locking nut here. So now that I have my tool centered to the material, I actually need to tell this tool to go down to the center line of the part. So we're going to come up and over. And now I'm actually going to come down and I'm going to line up the center of the two inserts to the center of the part. It's got to be pretty close, but I'm going to eyeball it the best I can. And that looks pretty good. So now that I have my tool lined up where I like it in X, 
I'm gonna center it just like I would on a drill. I'm gonna go to my tool on my offset page, tool three, make sure the X column is highlighted, and then we're gonna hit X diameter measure. It's gonna ask me to enter a diameter, but because I just want this on center line, we're gonna hit zero and we're gonna hit enter. And that's it. Now the tool, when it goes down to X zero, it'll go down to this position here. Now that I have my X on my tool set, we're gonna to touch off Z now. Because we touched off to the front of the insert and not the front of the tool, we need to make sure that we're pulled out far enough on the bar to not hit the front of the chuck. Because this is about a quarter inch, I always give myself half an inch. I can't really touch this off like I'd like to because of the way this tool is spaced, the inserts are kind of at an odd place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a quarter inch shim that I have here and I'm gonna to touch it off to the front of the part to the front of the insert. I got half of my shim against the part and the other half I'm gonna handle jog just very lightly until I feel that this shim touches the insert. And it doesn't really need to be perfect because this is just a knurling tool. So we're lined up, I'm flush on the bar, I'm about flush on the insert. So now I got the tool set where I want it using the shim. We're gonna put my Z offset manually over here. One important thing with this setup, I ran the first tool with touched off tools already. I had an OD tool come and face the part and turn the OD to my pre-neural diameter. It set a G54 using that tool and I'm gonna use that G54 number to manually touch off the tool to the front of the part. So the first thing I'm gonna do my tool is in position right where I left off when I use the shim. So I'm going to highlight this Z column and I'm going to push Z face measure. That gave me a tool position for Z. But now we need to bring it close and we need to give it our G54 number. So right after setting Z face measure, I'm going to take my quarter inch shim that I have here and I'm going to subtract it. I'm going to tell it to move in to what the shim was. We're going to go negative 0.25. I'm going to hit enter. And now it's got the shim offset in there. As long as I face the part with the tool to my Z0 that was set on G54, I can use that same G54 offset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this G54 number, it's negative 6.673, and I'm going to enter it 6.673. It's the same number except this number is a positive number when this number is a negative number. We set it to the opposite direction. So if this number was positive, this number would be negative. It's a little confusing, but just for this example, this is a negative number, this number is gonna be positive. I'm gonna make sure that I enter this number into my Z column for this tool number three. I'm gonna hit enter, I'm gonna accept the warning here, and you can see now that this number changed quite a bit. Now this tool is all set on my Z offset. We're pretty much ready to start making a part. So first up, I've got our OD rougher. It's facing the part and it's turning across our pre-neural diameter of 985. Next up, we got our knurler. It's just feeding straight across. Good. All right, I've got tool number one up again. It's gonna do a little finish pass. It's just gonna skim the top of the part at one inch 15, just to knock off the very tip of the diamond so it's not so sharp. All right, so last I got my part off tool. The part catcher comes up, nice and slow. And there we have it, it's beautiful. Oh man, look at that, that's a beautiful knurl. So diamonds look good, they're nice and tight. I came across the top and skimmed it just to make it so it wasn't so sharp at the top. It looks beautiful, you gotta admit, it looks pretty cool too. So that was knurling. 
I hope you guys liked it. If you got any questions, put it down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. You guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Boom. <laughs>